Okay, so this series is looking at the end game opening. A change in the mindset for basically maneuvering pieces as if you're actually in the end game at the start of the match. This helps to speed up the searching for weak areas, weak pieces, weak areas around the king, the king itself, so that we can target and utilize the answer even more efficiently. So having the idea that you want to end the game right at the very beginning, not quick and dirty tactics, but more focused, targeted attacks on opponents weak areas for better improved attempts at getting towards the king area and the king so the end game opening is not a new name that i'm making up for any type of opening it's not a replacement for sicilians or nidoffs or anything like that it's a change in mindset to say well from the beginning i'm not going to dance around trying to be fancy placing pieces where they don't need to be placed but actually getting into action looking towards the king area and taking appropriate effective moves towards ending the game Okay, just want to talk about a new subject uh, called the end game opening. It's an additional concept to sit underneath the, the answer process that we're currently working on. So currently we have the checks, captures, threats, support, blocking as part of 
the old age um, formula for moving your pieces around the board in chess and then we have the attacking the king area um, and the area around the king and the king itself attacking key spaces key pieces weak spaces and weak pieces and working all of the underlying concepts around within the mantra in terms of the usability of each of our pieces and then obviously we're looking at changing the mindset now of how we operate within the game in terms of there are no stages anymore there's not an opening stage or a mid game stage there's an end game opening stage changing our mindset now to actually look at the end game from the opening position looking at what the opponent is actually giving us and then basically formulating the end game from this early point onwards the reason i say this is from the research from, from my games where opponents have gone straight into attack mode and absolute attack mode and there, there was no mid game there was <laughs> and it was just straight to the end game basically and it was it's really quite amazing to see it and i've often said well the books have said you, you have to go through the opening you have to go through the mid game and you have to go for the end game um no you don't and this is something i've learned within my game developing is about basically saying what the opponent gives to you generates your end game <clears throat> so if you can get your end game formula in then there's not a much that the opponent can do to stop you from getting it so it's going to go king side castling so our end game process now looking from this point on is about going to that area the king area attacking the king looking at the wheat squares as we mentioned but it's now really fine tuning the attack on the appropriate weak areas so going to attack the bishop first and it's not to say that you would not have done these things already based on attacking the weak areas concept we're going to capture the bishop to open up a little bit of space castle ourselves just to give king safety but the end game now is inside we're focused on end game we're not focused on preliminary weak weak areas you know this pawn's weak but i'm not focused on that pawn i'm focused now on ending the game so i'm going to attack a higher piece which is the queen here I'm going to bring it back because he will be attacking so how do we end this game he can end the game in many ways by taking as many pieces off the board of the opponents as possible so that they capitulate because they have no army or you attack the king area and smother the king those are the two ways of exacting the end game opening <clears throat> and we've practiced quite a lot of strategies in terms of strategically taking pieces off the board which is attacking the weak but you know the weak areas and the weak pieces also simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board using those types of concepts there appropriate targeting focused targeting yeah as we said it was coming down for the night so we were going to bring it back but now that they've done that focus targeting should help us get one of these rooks off the board so as we said there's two ways of doing the end game opening reducing down the amount of pieces the opponent's got or smothering the king area it does help i think with the mental aspect of understanding that oh yes i can go straight into end game i don't have to dance around and take a few pawns here or position my pawns and lock down it's a whole different mindset so it's improving the way that i think it's not i'm not winning all the games all the times because sometimes i focus too much maybe on um attacking pieces that don't really need attacking so which is the best one to take probably taking the one in the corner and we can look to exchange off now the queen and reducing down 
because we're in end game mode now we're not in um attacking weak area pieces mode we're in an end game mode we want to end the game so we're attacking this pawn here if the queen doesn't take if the queen takes we're still attacking this pawn so they're going to have to spend time defending this pawn but i'm not too interested in that what i'm interested in is how can i either reduce down their pieces or smother their king because now i'm advanced in terms of which one do we want to take which shall we take with this rook yeah so now we're more advanced now in terms of being able to target um weak areas now we want to attack the really really weak areas so that we can deliver what we want to deliver we can reduce down or attempt to reduce down by attacking a piece and just capture what on that piece he'll get the pawn but we can defend the pawn so you don't want to be silly doing it you still want to keep protecting stuff if you can but if you can't don't lose any sleep over it just improve your position that's either going to reduce the pieces they've got on the board or smother their king area it's not actually gone back to take so he's coming down for our rooks here with this um little situation so we're going to attack his pawn here it's weak at the minute it's not protected but the rook can simply can come and defend he's still got a fork because his knight can come here and he's not actually seen that yeah so that was a bit of an error on my side but it's also an error on the opponent's side shows i am human yep so what we're going to do now is we're just going to move to here aren't we so that it stops the knight from jumping to this square or we could move this rook probably best with this rook is it yeah let's move with this rook although this pawn's going to come down and move that rook isn't it but if it does then we can take but then he can come down for that so let's go here so it's a nice spot but not a nice spot because the opponent could have actually got his rook back but like we said if you're going to lose a piece don't get in a flap try and improve your position because we're in the end game process we want to reduce down we want to smother the king whichever way around it works it's a shame the opponent missed that then that that would have shut me up for a second wouldn't it So where's he going to go from here? He's got pawn advantage on this side here. But we don't want to get caught in the little itty bitty details of things. Yes, we know about these itty bitty things. Our little pawn it could touch onto his knight here if he's not going to move. Does it help us get to the smotherication of their king or reducing down any of their pieces? His knight can't jump here, can't jump there, but he can jump there to attack our rook. So we have to be mindful of that but the rook is looking to go here to get around the back anyway so that would be a nice gift but obviously his knight doesn't have to move and we don't have a piece that can actually move it from there so that might be a very good outpost for them so they've gone into a long deep think And they may be kicking themselves the fact that they missed that opportunity because nothing is perfect in your games in in any game if it's gone to the outpost so that's lovely so we can move up so that we can look to double up our rook with this rook here onto this pawn because we want to end the game and he's moved his knight very quickly is he moving it so that he can come and support oh yeah he can can't he because he's, he's going to come here then he's on our rook but our rook can take the pawn but then his knight takes but then our rook takes with a background checkmate does it not let's go here it's a small calculation probably done it wrong but we shall see oh no he don't he gets it back oh i didn't look backwards because his knight jumps here if we then take the pawn his knight can take our rook i was going with the assumption that he just jumped down the bottom and take the knight the rook 
yeah so that doesn't work so we've got this pawn to push here but then he just blocks off right so it's not working as he's got a pawn as well not working as smooth as we want but the idea is there because we can actually go and attack the knight and when we attack the knight where does the knight go Ooh, look at that beautiful position there with the fork on the rook <laughs> he's thinking of everything isn't he wow so we'd have to go here amazing okay so we'll have to go here to stop that fork business going on so he can take the pawn if he takes the pawn we take this pawn here and then his rook's under pressure as to whether or not he gets involved in that So yeah, I'm liking this game because it's helping us to show the thought process that we're going through. It's the end game opening. If you're thinking that it's not any different to looking at your checks, captures, threats, supporting, blocking, um, then you would be wrong. If you're thinking it's not different to, well, doing the targeting of the weak areas and um, weak pieces, weak spaces, um, that type of thing, then you would be wrong um, because it's a jump ahead of that it has a deeper purpose which is the end game so we got to end game mentality at this stage through appropriate movement of the end game psychology i won't mention any of the other concepts because it's its own concept and at the moment we are like um, it's plus two for us because we're up the exchange based on the fact that we want to get to the end game we wanted to reduce down the amount of pieces that the opponent's got or the power of the pieces that the, op the opponent's got and then for or smother the king area so it's not like i say quick and dirty tactics because as you can see this is taking a while it's a definite understanding of putting more pressure on your own selection of what is a weak area what you've identified as a weak area really look at that and say well is that then helping me get towards the end game or is it just there as a little bit of fancy to say oh look at what i've got I've, 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 I've identified your weak spot oh this is interesting so if we take the pawn yep if we take the pawn and he takes our rook with the knight then the rook takes with the background checkmate so that's not going to work for them if we take the pawn and his rook takes our rook takes is, does he have a fork on our king no it doesn't so i'm going to take the pawn because we want to end the game and if he does take here then that's the end game because our rook can take and his king can't move so he may just take with his rook and then we take back here yes yeah, so he does so we capture the rook now he has to move a pawn or move the king because we want to end the game we don't want to fancy it up in any way and he does move a pawn so we can come for this pawn here or is there a better move can't push this could push onto the knight but you don't know where you're pushing the knight to and he's going to get a fork on this pawn so we would lose tempo so i think we just go here and attack the pawn reducing down the amount of pieces because he's got two linked pawns which are fairly powerful so we still don't want him doing any of that so we want to come here with the rook and attack his weak area to reduce down so that he capitulates and resigns <laughs> so we can take the pawn but before we rush and take the pawn could we save this pawn or does he or he'll come back and save his own pawn if we don't move if we move this he'll come back and save his pawn i think we're a bit stronger really with the rook maybe coming down to attack the other pawn so i think we will capture this pawn taking the pieces that are going to give us the proper end fingers crossed and i am into hope chess because like i've said mentioned before everybody that plays hope chess so we can attack this i don't think the knight can come and defend that pawn so we're taking away all the strength that potentially they had of getting us 
we're sort of trying to get them to capitulate and resign so I'm hoping as well it's showing that it's not a quick and dirty thing like I've mentioned before it's about a different mindset in being able to go the distance and even in your shorter games utilizing this aspect of end game opening um, does put a lot of difference on the way that you move on the board and your selection of identified weak areas it's coming for a check on our king uh, it's not a checkmate per se so we can take this pawn yeah so he's coming for the check could go and attack it don't like it when they bounce around and keep putting checks on all the time but we i don't think there's much danger here so let's attack the knight and the next thing probably is just maybe bringing the rook across here to own this file and then try and shoe this pawn up and he's letting the knight go so we'll take the knight and it looks like they're just playing give up chess now so this is the capitulation thing that we're talking about here um which is fine and yeah so he's just going to go up and down so we bring the rook here like we said so i don't want to waste any time and just keep moving up and down so basically at the end of the day it's either trying to go for a stalemate but he can move his pawns or potentially just resign at this stage that's the whole idea behind the end game opening either to get the smothercation of the king or reduce down the amount of pieces that they've got so that they can continue okay so it's um it's basically saying prove it or something or the other um let's go here do, 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 do. let's go there do, 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 do. Well, 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 let me see. I don't really know. I could do anything. That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> um, and there. And there. Bum, 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 bum. Let's go there. And there. Okay, that was, um, that was good fun. But it's also really good to be able to demonstrate what you're talking about. Um, even though we did slip up in in those terms where he could have actually um forked us with his his knight but it's again proving that point that well your opponent may not see everything so it's not nothing's perfect in the world of chess you know you've got grandmasters that make blunders all over the place so um i'm nowhere near any grandmaster level so what i'm trying to do is formulate a system for myself hopefully if it helps anybody else with their mindset within chess then i'll uh, I'll feel really quite good about that so the idea of the end game opening is to look at the end game right from the opening and any opportunity that you get based on your identification of weak areas weak speed weak pieces and um, the attempt at going for the king area and putting pressure on the king directly if you can build those into your simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategy and the complete answer process will then start falling into place quite nicely. Okay, so looking at the end game opening, looking at the end game right at the start of the game. So no longer are uh, my movements even thinking about thinking their opening in an opening they're doing the end game in the opening so we we'll want to focus on either smothercating their king area or reducing down the amount of pieces that they have on the board so that they can capitulate so i'm going to bring the bishop out and it may not look any different to how we've operated in the past but there's a slight difference in the fact of my mindset now is saying end game it's not saying i'm opening to attack a few little weak pieces at the front of his king i'm now going to be more selective about what i'm classing as a high priority weak area that's going to give me a better advantage on the board and that advantage is the end game any movement that I make, I want to make sure it does one of those two key things. 
takes off a crucial piece of the board so that the opponent is basically injured um they you know they they've been they, it makes them struggle you know it's it's a key piece or it's a even a pawn is a key piece if they're relying on that pawn to maybe be like an outpost for something then let's take that action so nice steady opening keeping all my pieces nice and steady facing towards the king they're not going to castle just yet so i'm hoping that we can work with that quite nicely so we're going to bring the bishop through attack a key piece it's unprotected at the moment so still keep all the other concepts in mind with the slight difference now that you're actually thinking about ending the game you want to be able to say to yourself well i'm taking this extra piece off because it's going to help me end the game and the, the opponent's going to struggle or this piece is getting closer towards the king gary so they're going to feel suffocated and they won't be able to move their king so they're going to struggle so those are the types of things we're looking at playing in this game here we're hopefully trying to demonstrate that process all depends on what the opponent does though as to if you want to try and go for a quick checkmate it depends on what the opponent gives you you can't force it it depends on what they do okay so we're going to grab this piece because they're wanting to stay there for the long haul but we're interested in the end game so we're going to attack a piece getting closer towards their king area but as we said we just want to reduce down and this falls in line quite nicely with the simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically and underneath that strategically is the end game opening we're facing a weak pawn here so he's yes taken we could take this pawn here to um, see if the big guns are going to come off the board don't mind getting the 20 pointer which is my king not being able to castle so that's fine they'll feel happy doing that but at the same token we are looking at end game so there's no point in going castling because we're planning on putting pressure on his king area with his undeveloped pieces on this side but we're not going to look at those itty bitty details we want to focus on what we can do to put pressure on their king or remove pieces from the board because we're in end game mode now it does make your movements more specific more directed and then you're not wasting moves the whole idea is about being efficient with your movements so we're going to move the knight knight is attacking this pawn but it's not really it really wants to get up to the king area these pieces aren't supporting this bishop potentially coming out to a blunted area i'm fairly comfortable with that if we can look to exchange off the rook then we're owning this file his king's struggling so we're already started to try and hopefully suffocate the king area from a distance but like i said it's all about what the opponent gives to you so they've pushed and we could do on pass on but that releases his knight so I'm actually going to go and attack the rook like we said so this is selecting the right moves yes we could have gone on pass on and it would have been all fancy but it, it develops their knight their knight is still blocked it'd have to come onto the rim get exchanged off yep so a bishop would take either way but the idea is we want to actually go and suffocate the king if we can get these this rook doubled that would be even better so if he decides oh no move my rook out of the way we get to double the rooks up more opportunity to suffocate the king area potentially getting the knight involved as well at some stage but if he does take then we take we're still owning this file oh and what did we say we do have a discovered check you see with the bishop here on the rook but we're not going to do that just yet because we're just going to contemplate just doubling up don't want him to go there because he's going to push his pawn down and block so he might block anyway with that pawn so do we miss an opportunity although i don't really want his knight coming out so this pawn is doing a good job so let's leave it there for now yes the bishop's blunted for now but we'll let's just 
go here double the rooks up once this rook is here we can potentially get the knight into the center swing it over to here and then it's controlling a little bit of square here while managing this area for a bit so i wasn't surprised that they didn't take but yeah so he's blocked the pawn off which is nice that's good so we can double the rooks like we said because we're in end game mode look at his poor pieces at the minute they've not been developed because we've gone into end game mode it's not saying we're winning but it feels a lot better bishop does have this little diagonal here don't forget as well to operate on to actually go and close down suffocate the king area a bit more so they, they know what's going on they can see what's going on um oh the bishops come out so the knight is looking to come across here it's attacking this pawn but also really looking to come to this square here to get a bit more suffocation around the king so as we mentioned before it's not about quick and dirty tactics this is like taking a long while to develop this but because of the end game mentality we've been able to attack the critical key weak areas uh, to help us establish this strong position here whereby uh, currently the opponent hasn't got castled and their king is stuck in the middle of the board and that's what the type of stuff that's happened to me in the past and still does now you know when um, I uh, lose myself is that you spend that much time fencing with your pawns and your, your minor pieces in the center of the board that you forget that there's ooh, he's blocked off the knight coming to attack here this pawn rook can come here it's got a two on one on this pawn and it's got a, a one on one on this pawn here facing the king so it's slow incremental build-ups yeah what was i saying yeah you can spend a lot of time with your minor pieces in the center of the board in the in the opening as a, as a normal opening um people spend a lot of time jumping around sort of arty with the moves yes look i'm playing chess but to me the art of chess is the end game opening it's looking at developing the end game as soon as you can from the beginning but it all depends on what the opponent does and it's not quick and dirty cheap tactics it's using proper concepts using all of the stuff that we've worked on under the answer process so the move the king protecting the pawn rook can come here to put a check on the king or the knight can take the pawn here or the rook can take so i'm going to take with the rook i didn't put much thought into that but i'm taking with the rook so what i didn't want his was, was his rook being able to take our pawn here and he's not going for that he's going for an exchange so that is a horse of a different color because we could bring our rook here but uh, let me think now we've got like 46 minutes here so i don't need to rush it now um let's see what can we do we can take a pawn i was thinking of bringing this rook here and then bringing that rook there but his rook is there if we take his rook his rook takes we'd need to push this pawn up to defend itself then he's got time to come and defend this pawn here because the knight is ready to take it don't really like them apples but we do have the bishop being able to attack this knight here so maybe our rook could come up there or do we push the pawn first then or are we allowing him time are we allowing him time I'm going to go with that process capture push the pawn and look for our rook to go here and the bishop to go here with a two on one he can always bring his rook there but then maybe we can take this pawn unless of course he's going to push onto the pawn looking to disturb the structure which might happen
So currently plus one after all of that. And we said it's going to push, so he did push. So knight could come here attacking this pawn, but also being able to come here. Just wish his king was further down. So knight can go there, because if his pawn takes, we just take. If he pushes down, yeah, it's highly developed, but there's nothing at the moment. Uh, I think I'm going to bring the knight across attacking this uh, weak pawn here but it's really looking for advancement of my I don't really want his rook putting a pin on my knight though but the king is protecting so that's okay and I really wanted my rook to be here didn't I so I could get the bishop here that might still happen depends on what he does next I'm thinking he's still going to go with the pawn tape, but we've got enough, I think, to be able to defend. Then his rook is probably looking to come round the back somehow. That seems like a long story. So the skills that we've learned in the answer process, all the way through, as we're looking now, we're in the end game opening. So we've got to keep a high critical level thought process of all the things that we've learned such as the attacking the weak areas and attacking the critical weak areas rather than looking at the smaller weak areas i think that's the massive difference for me keeping it as simple as i can for myself and keep reminding myself of about attacking the critical areas rather than potentially smaller ineffective areas But it is always down to what the opponent does because that's what separates the different rating levels against you know so he does actually take so we could take with the knight could take with the pawn we're going to take with the pawn like we said and we're still on this pawn here so he maybe has to do something about that which is simply pushing down does that give us time to get this rook here facing the knight but it's not big potatoes is it because like we said his rook can come here but then his rook is babysitting the knight maybe then we can start pushing these pawns up because we've got like a pawn majority on this side we could look to trap my bishop couldn't he push that pawn then my bishop can't go in there and then he's on a sly one by pushing this pawn on i come down here and Ooh, almost got me is it that you'd have to push this down a bit further okay so yeah it's pushed it down so it's no longer a critical thing I don't think I could bring the knight here his rook comes to um, pin through onto my rook going for the exchange where does my knight go does it have a check or anything not really so if I attempted to bring the rook here it makes him go across there doesn't it I'm sure it does or well, maybe his king just comes and attacks the rook well I've been harping on about that move so I think I am going to go with that that seems pretty critical for me in terms of putting pressure on the king area so that's why I'm trying I'm going for that but he could always move his rook and attack our knight doesn't he that's just supporting so I'd have to push this pawn he takes oh maybe I should have pushed it mind you no so if he attacks the knight which potentially could do because then he can come down here can't he Ooh, and then he's got my pawn and no oh he has done as well he has done as well critical situation now we did say that the bishop wanted to come here yeah so if the bishop comes here if he takes our knight we take his knight with a check on his king his king moves and then Ooh, i think i'm bishop's there i could then put a check on his king and then his rook has to take and then we take with the bishop 
his bishop's locked in at the minute so it's a bit difficult so that might be a nice exchange let's go with that let's go with that looking at the critical weakness of the white, white square bishop that exchange looks pretty favorable oh no do you know what i thought the rook would be able to come down there and then the bishop be able to take but if the rook takes the put a knight it would be on a dark square oh so that doesn't work out damn that doesn't work out i should have just taken my time if you I'm trying not to use the arrows so um, yeah so if his rook takes and then our rook takes with a check idea is then his king goes there but then my rook is here and I thought it was here and then I would have been able to go here put a check on his king so now I, I lose out because I won't be able to come down and defend this area so I'm going to have to change it quick time. Oh. So his rook takes. If the bishop takes, then his rook just comes down, puts the check on and wins the pawn. Comes down, puts the check on, move the king there. He could go for a draw because he could just go up and down. If I go there. Hmm. Yes, 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 so that's with me getting giddy with my end game opening. Let's see if we can fashion something, but I, oh, he's not actually not gone for it. He's feeling really pressurized on this area, so I think he, he might have saved us. He might have saved us, you know. Uh Ooh, how though? How has he saved us? Because <laughs> uh, the knight is still going, he's very confident. I could bring the knight here, couldn't I? It's taken it away from the party, but could bring it there. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I could press a mouse click. I was only demonstrating. So now he's coming down, he's getting the pawn now. I think I've messed it up. But. If it does come down at some stage, the knight will be able to come here, put a check on the king. Oh, that was... <laughs> I was only doing demonstration of... And plus, I'm actually attacking a pawn as well. But it, like I say, he could actually come for a draw. But seeing as our rook is here now, we should be fairly okay on that score. Yes, he gets a pawn. And we're plus one at the minute, so he gets the pawn back. But, positionally, we have pieces around his king potentially looking to suffocate him so that's the idea of the end game opening even though that again i seem to be doing quite a lot of errors <laughs> i did an error in the last one moving my rook and he could have put a fork on me but it's like we say the opponent has to see these things if they don't see them then you're okay so he comes down for the check king drops if he comes down again for man, if I don't even need to drop I could just bring my rook down what am I on about yeah so his rook comes down we go there and then he, he goes back up to attack he can't attack there because the knight will take him so all's good in the hood oh the king's getting into the party oh, well horse of a different colour isn't it Okay, my knight's not under threat at the minute. It's got a nice outpost here for putting a check on the king. So I could move the rook back down. Or could move it attacking this pawn here. But then his knight is... Uh, could go there like that, couldn't we? But that's not good. I better stop doing that because I'll end up landing on it. Hmm. 
Yeah, because if we went check, we're on his rug, but his king takes our rug, takes and then he takes the knight. So I think we're coming come back here, aren't we? Yeah. And where's his knight going now? He's got outposts all over the place, blocking my rook left, right and centre. So he's fighting from the back, he's doing like a rope a type situation. I think that's the best thing for us to do, just bring the rook back. So we'll bring the rook back here. So again, it's proving the end game opening isn't an exact science, but like I say, we do have this. If he keeps his king and his rook there, we have a knight fork which looks quite tasty for us to deliver so if he's thinking about moving his knight now because he's thinking well the bishops on there don't want my knight taken although he could move his knight there no, that, yeah. so this is another one that I'm, I'm enjoying playing showing like the end game opening process different mindset um, if you're looking at it and you're going, oh well, you know, you don't have to have an end game opening process to get to this type of position. It's the smallest of detail in gaining that advantage positionally on the board. That's the difference between using the end game opening. When you see players using this type of concept, the end game opening, um, you begin to understand how they've actually done it, how they've actually grab those extra pieces or grab that main, maintained what's the word a bit of a power and a bit of a strength towards the king area how is it that they've got a piece up you know it's because they've started earlier in the end game process and caught the opponent asleep or set the opponent off on a fictitious attack process to make them look good and all the while they've been thinking i'm end gaming you so you can mess about doing your fancy opening but I'm end gaming you and then the opponent gets caught short because they're not at end game stage so I'm saying right from the start of a game always have end game in your sights because all I can say is look at the poor king at the moment look at the poor bishop it's not really it's trying to get out into the game poor knight it's trying to get out and the rook as well it's trying to get out they don't have oh he's moved but his bishop's gonna take the knight ma tell you do i mind the bishop taking the knight he's got this lovely outpost here now nothing can touch his knight oh do i take his pawn instead is it a critical pawn <laughs> do I really want to because if I do that his bishop takes the pawn takes then the pawn is going to get taken because the rook will just come down this side here to attack the pawn nothing that can is it a, it's on a white square bishop can come and protect it but then the knight will take oh savage the knight will take the pawn will come up here in front of the king but the knight is there blocking my it's looking blocking my rook the knight blocker i've always said i do like the knight blockers and i like doing the knight block but not when it keeps constantly getting done to me mm. taking the pawn here free pawn still got like a, so that's basically will be two plus two based on the position on the board it doesn't look too hefty for us his knight's going to come and put a check it's, uh, it's not going to come here he can go there to attack the pawn yeah because if we take then his rook comes here on the, on our knight our knight has to come out so then he's going to get the pawn but uh, yeah and he'll have his knight here on the pawn so we'd have to push the pawn up and then the rook will be able to take but if we go here and then we go there and then we can push the pawn up and then he's got the bishop on it as well so we could push it up twice hmm a lot of thinking going on here this is a long game it's um 45 minute 15 second game so got plenty of time I'm on 41 minutes, they're on 34 minutes at the moment. So the longer games do help 
I think, improve your game. So I'm actually going to take the pawn, I'm classing it as critical at this moment rather than coming here because the bishop's going to take and our pawn is in no man's land, I think. Let's grab this pawn. So again, that's the end game opening process. My, oh, it's gone straight for the process that we're talking about. So if we bring the knight here, so he's looking at doubling up on this pawn with his knight. I think the knight will come here, obviously. And then we said we we're just going to double push here. And then obviously his rook is going to be trying to come and face this pawn. Hmm, interesting. So that means we're going to need to... He doesn't really want to move his knight. If we could entice his rook down, yeah. So if his knight did move at some stage and we could entice his rook down by actually you know, moving our knight here and his rook took, then we'd get like some sort of check on his king. It's not a checkmate really though, is it? Oh, what was that? What is that? Oh, he still gets it. I didn't actually see that. Oh, flippity jibbers. But he's opened up this lovely file for us, so um, I shouldn't really cry too much. Shall we go on a dark square? Let's go on a dark square. If he wants to trade down, then that's all better with the rooks. But if he's going with the knight, um, we might have some surprises for him. Because his, his pieces are further away from our king. Probably might need to give our king a flight square because his rook might want to be doing a bit of fancy dancing. But if he's going for a simple rook exchange, we're like plus two at the moment. Then we'll be plus one once the pawn gets taken. Does he really want to contend with this extra pawn? So I think it's probably best taken with the knight. Takes with the knight. Our knight jumps here to put a check on his king. Or does it? Takes with the knight. Knight jumps and attacks the rook. Rook wants to keep protecting his knight, so he'll drop down to actually attack our knight. Our knight is here. If he goes down, then we go for that check thing that we talked about. So if we go there. And he's gone for it with the knight. So if we go with the knight here attacking the, his rook. He's, want to, he's going to want to keep his rook on the knight. So he'll come down and attack our rook here. That's what I'm thinking. If he does that, our rook can come here and put a check on his king. So his king will be here. Our knight is here. Knight can go here. Interesting times. Could still just put a check on his king. Bishop takes. But no. Do we give the king a flight square? Do we attack the rook? I'm quite liking it. There's something there. But I can't see the finish. And I don't... Well, I don't want to calculate too far in advance because it usually gets messed up. Going to attack the rook. It feels something feels right about it because we're around his king area, and that's the whole idea. So that feels like a critical move, attacking a higher piece with a lesser piece as well, with the intention of potentially getting his rook off the ball. But like I said, I think he's going to stay on this file because he wants to keep his knight. Stay on that file and he'll come here and then we'll think about what we want to do next. We did say Rook coming here, putting a check on the king. I just feel there's something. It's just maybe the knight is in the slightest wrongest place. <laughs> to actually deliver what I wanted to deliver. this pawn's got no protection on it you see I just my brain is like thinking well surely we should be able to take that but we do have a critical issue in terms of his rug being able to access down the back here 
and this bishop sitting in wait to come across at some stage here to attack our rook so the queen might do that now <laughs> so we have to be careful small pawn move up here get the king up we'll see after the next move what the rook what the rook does i still think it's coming here if it comes there we could actually block its access to the knight oh, it's gone the wrong it's gone a different way so he, he wants the exchange and keeping us with a plus one he doesn't like the idea of that bishop attack thing does he but seeing as the knight has been kept there is there some magic is there some magic couldn't the rook my rook come here now attacking this pawn My rook comes and attacks this pawn. It looks like a critical pawn because it's in front of the king and plus it could release this pawn to maybe get promoted. And it's defending the knight. Can his knight come up and attack me? No. No. His bishop. Ooh, what am I talking about? His bishop will take me. Oh, he's no. So special sometimes. <laughs> right. What else is there? So he's on the pawn now, you see. He's on my pawn. So even if I did move it, he's going to take. Although I could still keep using that as the bait. Take his knight. He takes our knight. I bring my rook back. I'm on a white square. His bishop comes and attacks, and I have to drop back. I'm still plus one. He takes his on a white square. But my rook is no longer here defending that square. Knight. Mm, knight. Could go there, attacking his rook and the bishop. Okay, so knight comes here, attacks the rook and the bishop. Rook's protected now at the minute. He comes down, takes the pawn. It's that back rank thing, isn't it? But uh, yeah, he'll get a draw. That's not good. Might even get a checkmate. I come here. He takes the pawn. I forget myself and go. And, ooh, I could get a check on him. Check. Yeah, so there. He takes the pawn come here rather than taking the bishop get a check on his king it's not going to go there with the discovered thing so he'll go here with his king rook comes up with a check on the king bishop comes in front or in fact maybe he just drops to the back but he's not, yeah, he's going to drop, he drops to the back. It's on a dark square. Where's the knight? Knight's here, isn't it? So he can't drop back. We well, can't drop back and he can't go there. That'd be checkmate, wouldn't it? Knight comes here. If the rook takes the pawn, knight comes here with a check. He could go there, but he's going to get... I can take the pawn with a check on him. I suppose then we could get a draw, couldn't we, again? Well, I'm going with that because it's looking pretty sticky at the minute. And we're trying to keep the pressure on the king area. I think that is a either a drawing position or a potential checkmate position I'm not going further with the calculation I'll go with the maximum of four if anything could even do something magical with the bishop I didn't encounter any of that oh yeah attack my rook yeah he could do that couldn't he what would I do then <laughs> Hmm. 
yeah so I don't think it's gonna go the way that I planned I was so focused on him actually taking this pawn here hmm interesting this is a long one yes many options many options bishop attacking the rook looks more aggressive for them doesn't it attacks the rook then if our knight takes his rook his bishop takes our rook then it doesn't look easy to get any sort of checkmate type things we've got a pass pawn here but it's like he's got <laughs> he's got his bishop and his knight around there bring the knight around and around to try and get this pawn it were too late okay right so it's all a case of waiting for what the opponent does next and they actually take so we're going to do with what we said which i thought this is where we potentially potentially he could get a draw if it all goes wrong here because it'll just be up and down up and down and he has gone to that square and I think the bishop's just going to block, isn't it? Now that I'm seeing it for real, I think the bishop is just going to block. So what happens when the bishop blocks? There's no more checks, is there? Hmm. Is this a waiting thing now? Is it a waiting thing? Knight takes the pawn on the bishop. His rook comes down. King comes up then his knight puts a check on the king so do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to give the king a flight square yep after all of that so I feel fairly fairly okay with what's going on on their king side I'm just thinking well I don't want them feeling too crafty and just getting a back ranker or potentially pulling out a draw because he's got this knight and rook combination that can mess you up sometimes so he's probably can, he can go back now and defend that area <clears throat> but we do we're on this pawn at the minute but he's got time to move his king as well so he's got options i think the best one is saving his king from getting a check and putting pressure on his king area while he does that knight can take the pawn here Oh, do you know what? He might even come for the um, pawn here. But if he does that, we're, we're checking him a little bit. Although it's really not that good because his bishop can block. That's why we didn't go rushing up there. <sighs> I sure I had a different story when I went through saying, well, yeah, the bishop can block. So what was I going to do then? Look. Bishop blocks. But if the bishop blocks then the knight can take the pawn because the bishop then is on his bishop and the bishop is pinned to the king that's what it was but, why didn't but that's because it was a tempo down <coughs> and his rook would be able to come down here and put some checks on my king and potentially get a draw or checkmate me so this is why i've had to do the um flight square yeah it was a move back it was a move down because it would have been rook check bishop block and then there's no check after that it's just the knight moving during that stage the rook would come down and put a check on and i wouldn't have had a flight square so i'd be bouncing up and down can't move anywhere because he's got this powerful pawn blocking here then his knight can get into the action and sort of potentially may have checkmated me somehow So I think that was the right way to go about it. But something's telling me I'm not going to get to this position now, so I need to just uh, reframe. If I can't, still take this pawn because I'm on the bishop, but the bishop then comes and attacks the rook. So then he's formulating his pieces, coming to attack my king, but he's not actually in my king area yet, so it's He's going to have to move over towards my king. Mm -hmm. I 
Hmm. This is a very long game indeed. I would say to anybody though. Oh, it's coming in. It's coming in. Okay. So I'm going to go with that. I don't think I need to deliberate. Pawn drops. Bishop drops, sorry. Because the king can't go there. He can't go back. So the bishop has to do that. Knight comes here. But then he's, I suppose his king can move and attack the knight then, can't it? But then if they do that, the rook takes the bishop. So I'm moving quickly on these moves because those are the ones that I've worked out. Hopefully, fingers crossed, are going to be of benefit for us. But we don't have a check, so this is where he can start getting funky with me, with his rook check. I don't really know the continuation because I've not looked at that. It didn't look too meaty, but it probably is a checkmate in three moves or something. <laughs> but the difference in attack where we've got you see the rook we've got the bishop we've got the knight hopefully fingers crossed working together that's the sort of end game process that we're looking at in the longer game it help it really does help your game I, I prefer playing the longer game because that's the art of chess and this is how i've tried to develop this system of the answer with all these underlying concepts in there like i say it's not perfect at all but if you can think for yourself and start thinking um, differently, then you can start surprising um, higher level players um, or players that are just slightly above you. So he's blocked with the knight. Didn't see that one. Didn't see that, did we? So now I have to do something new. I can just take the bishop though, can't I? Surely. We're plus one. Still plus one. Shall we just take this bishop and stop messing about? Or I'll just take, bring the bishop here. His knight takes, pawn takes, pawns on the bishop. Because we want to get this pawn passed, don't we? Is there no checks on the king that I can put in? <sighs> So bring the bishop here you take them dots off uh, bring the bishop here he's not forced to take if i take then his knight takes and then i'm pinning his knight to the king but then his king just comes to the side here attacking the rook and then my knight can come here putting a check on the king and protect the rook at the same time from the outpost of this pawn this pawn is so flimsy though because his rook can just come and attack it hmm i don't like flimsy pot oops excuse me um i suppose this pawn could push up he could do an on pass on thing though which he would do <laughs> so what was the story take the bishop knight takes knight coming here to stop the king from actually going to the rook in the first place his rook comes and attacks this pawn we push this pawn he does on pass on so that's a waste mm. but the knight is here oh he's got this pawn here isn't it so I can't bring the rook down to attack the rook bring the bishop here for the knight to potentially take but I don't think he's going to take he might just attack the rook Oh dear, wow, sticky wicket. So what is the critical, critical thing? S simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. So if we take this pot, this bishop, his knight takes, knight can come down here and put a check on the king. King goes and attacks the rook. King 
goes and attacks the rook. Rook comes back. I need to come. Rook comes across here a bit. Then his rook attacks our pawn. Damn, I'm trying to save the pawn, aren't I? Our knight is here. Right, let me do that again. Bishop takes, knight takes. Knight comes here. King goes for the rook. Rook comes down. Rook goes for the pawn. Pawn goes up to attack to defend the pawn. En passant. What's the knight here? On pass on. So then knight comes here and protects. Okay, gonna do something like that. I think I don't know if I did that right. Yeah, because the knight is gonna be here. Something like that. But if he's if he's ooh, but if his rook stays there, then we can't do the on pass on. Oh no, that's if he goes and attacks the pawn. No problem. I think. It's getting a bit tense now. He's not forced to do anything that I'm saying though. Again, does actually take. We're going with this option, aren't we? Um, uh, let's go here with a check on the king. Comes for the rook, bring the rook down. Then he goes for our pawn. This is the bit where I think it might be wrong, but the knight is there, so might be able to do something. Got not forgetting he's got a knight as well, actually. So his knight can come here and attack the pawn as well yeah so it does actually but does it look different now that we've um oh look at that lovely free pawn i've got there as well do you know i'm going to risk it for a biscuit although it's nice going to come to the lovely outpost thing again isn't it going to outpost and then what else has he got uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Could come here and attack the pawn twice. Let's attack the pawn twice. If we're allowed to take the pawn, then at least we're potentially half saving this pawn for a bit. So that pattern completely changed. Once, I see, once you see the moves, actually, you know, you do your calculations, you get to your position then sometimes other movements jump out at you you see other different patterns and you probably see those patterns if you did longer calculations but there's no point doing that because then you forget what you've calculated and then the opponent if the opponent doesn't do what you've calculated it throws your whole thought process out so that's when you start getting fuzzy brain and your eyes go funny and your brain goes oh, what did i think there why did it end up like that so you say if we're just going for like a maximum four calculation looking at the position again reassessing what you've um calculated and then seeing if there's a different pattern case in point this here it's not saying it's winning but it feels better and white's resigned that is fantastic end game opening 